All right, my fellow soul fishers, welcome to the final video in this series. In this video, I'm going to talk about transposition. In particular, I'm going to talk about transposing instruments and how to read them in fixed do. As you may know, there are a number of transposing instruments in the orchestra. Uh, basically, that means if you play a C, a written C for that instrument, that you're going to hear a different note. Um, could be lower, could be higher and we'll see that instruments can have different transpositions. For the sake of this video, we're just going to concentrate on three of those instruments for simplicity's sake, uh, and we're also going to ignore the instruments that have octave transpositions, uh, like the piccolo, for example, uh, sounds an octave up. But let's go ahead and get started and take a look at some different transposing instruments. So one common transposing instrument is the clarinet and we have clarinets in B flat, A, D, and E flat. And that means, for example, that if I have a written middle C, that the sounding pitch of that instrument will actually be B flat. Uh, so a whole step lower if I'm using a B flat clarinet. And if I'm using a clarinet in A, then it will sound three half steps lower, or a minor third lower. And of course, if I'm using a clarinet in D, it's going to sound a uh, whole step up, or an E flat, three half steps up, or a minor third up. And another common transposing instrument we see in the orchestra is the French horn. And it sounds a perfect fifth lower than its written pitch. So if we have the middle C, uh, then we're actually going to hear uh, the F in the in the middle of the bass clef. Another common transposing instrument is the trumpet. And sometimes we have trumpets in C, so they'd sound as written. Uh, but we also have trumpets in B flat, which would sound like the clarinet a uh, whole step lower. And trumpets in D and E flat. And the D trumpet is going to sound a whole step higher, and E flat three half steps higher. And there are other transposing instruments as well. We have the euphonium, various saxophones, alto flute, English horn, and several other instruments. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, like I said in this video, we're just going to concentrate on three instruments in particular. It's going to be the B-flat clarinet, the French horn in F, and the trumpet in D. But before we get to some examples, I'd kind of like to lead you through the thought process of figuring out which clef to use and how many sharps or flats to add, because that's, that's how we're going to be reading these in fixed do. And one particularly useful tool will be the circle of fifths. So let's talk about this thought process here. So here's the circle of fifths. Our first step is to identify the transposition for the particular transposing instrument that we have. And this is something you have to know. I mean, this is going to be written in the score. Generally, it will say clarinet in B flat or horn in F, for example. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use C major and A minor as our reference points always. And we're going to ask ourselves what note comes out if I play a C. And for the B flat clarinet, of course, it's going to be B flat. And so we're going to look at our circle of fifths and determine how many flats we're going to need to add to the key signature that we have in the score. This is the first step. So for B flat, we're going to need to add two flats to whatever key signature we're given. If we're given a key signature with sharps, we're going to have to take away sharps. That'll be the equivalent of adding flats. And if we have a horn in F, we're going to need to add one flat. And if we have a trumpet in D, what do you think we're going to need to add? If you said two sharps, you're correct. Now, for the next step, we're going to have to look at the syllables that these notes have as well. So the clarinet in B flat, what syllable is B flat in solfege? It's going to be C, of course. And for F, what's the solfege syllable for F, for the horn? Fa. And for the trumpet in D major, it's going to be Re. So our next step is to take the clef we're given, 
let's take the clarinet as an example and find find the C in the middle of the staff and think to yourself what clef we've learned seven different clefs which clef has B flat or in solfege C at that location where this do is in C major and the answer to that is the tenor clef so we're going to use tenor clef and add two flats. Now if we have the horn in F, we're going to be in bass clef. Let's look and find Do in the bass clef, in the center of the bass clef. Now in what clef is that Fa? Because our transposition is to Fa. So what, in what clef do we have Fa where the, where the Do is in the bass clef? And the answer to that is, of course, soprano clef. Now, for the trumpet in D, we're going to be given a uh, treble clef. And we need to ask ourselves, in what clef is the do in the center of this treble clef? In what clef is that array? If you think about that for a moment, what clef is that array in the do in the um, where that where it is in the treble clef, and that's going to be alto clef. So these are the clefs that we're going to use for these instruments, and of course we're going to modify the key signatures as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example uh, for French horn. So here's an example. And like I said, the first thing we need to do is figure out what instrument is this, and it's the horn in F. So our transposition is going to be down a perfect fifth, and that brings our Do to Fa. And which clef was it again where the Do in the bass clef is a Fa? And of course it was the soprano clef. And as we saw, we need to add one flat. So basically what we're going to be doing is imagining that uh, we are reading the soprano clef, as you can see uh, in the clef above that I have written there. But we're going to be reading it in bass clef and uh, automatically adding a flat uh, at, that, at the line where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and read through this example. I'm going to take these examples all at 120 beats per minute and go ahead and give you a, uh, an F major warm-up, since that's the key we're in. And then I'll go ahead and give you a count of three and we'll read this example. Try to concentrate on the lower line and not use the upper line, because when you're doing score reading, you're not going to have this helper staff above. So let's go ahead and read this one. Fa, la, do, re, si, sol, mi, fa. One, two, three. Fa, do, fa, mi, re, si, do, la, so, fa, mi, re, si, do. Fa, do, si, la, so, fa. So that's not incredibly difficult. Let's take a slightly more complicated example of a horn where it's written in, where we see the key signature for A major. So here's our example, and the horn is reading in A major. But if you remember, we're going to have to add a flat. And as, as I mentioned, if we have a key signature with sharps, uh, adding a flat is the equivalent of taking away a sharp. Let's take a look at the circle of fifths again. So we're at A major, and we're going to need to shift to the left one key to add one flat, so to speak. And that's going to bring us into the key of D major. So we're going to be using the same clef, of course. You're always going to be using a soprano clef when reading horn that's written in bass clef. And now our example, our, our helper staff, so to speak, would look like this, what you see at the top. So let's go ahead and read through this example. Uh, again, this time I'll give you a warm up in D major and give you a count of three, and we'll read this one. But again, read the lower staff 
because in real score reading you're not going to have any helper staff at the top. So let's go ahead and read this one. Re fa la si sol mi do re. One, two, three. Re sol la sol re re fa mi re do re. Re mi fa fa do do. So that's the horn in F where we're generally going to be using the soprano clef and adding a flat to our key signature. Um, or if we have a key signature with sharps, we're going to be taking away one sharp. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples for the clarinet. So here's an example for clarinet. And the clarinet is reading in C, but of course it's a transposing instrument. And as I mentioned, we're looking at a B flat clarinet. And normally that would be written in this core. Uh, so we're going to need to figure out in what clef is the do that we see at the beginning there uh, going to be a B flat, a, a C. And of course, as I mentioned before, that's going to be the tenor clef. And we're going to have to add two flats to the key signature. And so we're going to have something that looks like this. So let's go ahead and read this example. I'll go ahead and give you a, a B flat major warm up. And I'll give you a one, two, ready, and. We'll take it 120, as I said. And we'll go ahead and read this one. So try to read that treble clef as if it's tenor clef and add the two flats in as well. Here we go. Si, re, fa, sol, mi, do, la, si. One, two, ready, and. Si, do, re, mi, do, re, sol, fa, si, la, sol, fa. Fa, fa, re, mi, fa, sol, la, sol, la, si. Do, re, si, fa, mi, re, do, do, si. So that might be relatively straightforward. Uh, let's take a slightly more complicated example of a clarinet, a B-flat clarinet example in G minor. So here's an example in G minor. And of course, we're just going to be using the same clef. It's going to be tenor clef. But this time, we're going to be adding two flats. And we're going to have the key signature for F minor, which is what this piece is actually in. So let's go ahead and do this one. You might notice there that the sharps become naturals in the places where there are flats in the key signature. That's just a feature. And generally, that comes pretty automatically when you're reading. It's not something we have to concentrate too much on. So let's go ahead and read this example. I'll give you an F minor warm up and a one, two, ready, go. And we'll come in on the Do. So go ahead and read that bottom staff for me as if it was in tenor clef with two more flats. Here we go. Fa, la, do, re, si, sol, mi, fa. One, two, ready, and. Do, la, si, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, fa. Fa, sol, la, si, do, do. Re, fa, mi, fa, sol, la, si, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, fa, la, sol, si, la, la. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example for trumpet in D. And this example is for the trumpet written in C minor. But as you remember, we're going to need to add two sharps. So let's take a look at the circle of fifths again. Basically, we're going to shift to the right two keys. And that'll be the equivalent of adding two sharps. So we're going to take away two of the flats. And that puts us in the key of D minor. And you might notice that the natural in the lower staff Notice that that natural is canceling one of the flats that's in the key signature is going to become a sharp in our new clef. And as I mentioned, generally this will come relatively naturally. So let's go ahead and read this one. I'll go ahead and give you a D minor warm up and a, a one, two, ready, go. And we'll take it at a tempo of 120. Go ahead and read that bottom staff, taking away two flats and in alto clef. Here we go. Re, fa, la, si, sol, mi, do, re. 
One, two, ready, and re fa so la si la la re do re mi va so fa fa mi mi la si so mi do si la la fa so mi do la so fa fa. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more example for fun. I wanted to show what an atonal example looks like when you do these transpositions and. It'll kind of show some of the weaknesses of fixed do, as atonal music uh, does tend to show in general. But let's go ahead and take a look at an atonal example for fun. So here's our example. Uh, obviously, I can't tell you what key this is in because there is no tonic. Uh, but let's go ahead and go through our thought process again. So we have the D major trumpet. So we need to take a look at a do in our treble clef and think which clef are we going to need to use. Uh, in which clef is that do a re? And of course, it's going to be the alto clef, as we've had before. And we're still going to need to add two sharps, which can be a little bit funky when you're reading atonal music. So we're actually going to have a key signature. And then you can see some other funky things that happen with the accidentals that uh, in the second measure there you can see that the flat has become a natural because there is a sharp written in the key signature on top there. Uh, but let's go ahead and read through this example. Uh, take it at about the same tempo, 120. And instead of doing an F or, you know, any warm up, I'm going to go ahead and just give you the first note, which is an F sharp. And then we'll go ahead and read through this one. So here we go. Fa. One, two, ready, and. Fa, do, re, fa, si, si, do, re, mi, la, la, si, la, so, so, re, fa, fa, so, mi, la, la. And that's how we read transpositions in fixed do solfege. It's a very useful skill for a conductor to have, as scores are generally not written in C. Sometimes you'll see at the bottom of the score, it'll, see, it'll say score in C. But generally, these are transpositions that a conductor has to do himself or herself. So my recommendation would be to take a look at some classical scores and go through this thought process yourself. That'll help a lot. I know that this seems seems like a kind of a complicated process at first, um, but with practice you'll get used to it. And I think that final example showed some of the weaknesses of fixed do solfege in general in confronting atonal music. Uh, it's also a weakness of our notational system. Arnold Schoenberg uh, famously came up with an alternative notational system for his 12-tone music, which of course didn't work, because when something's so deeply ingrained in our tradition as our notation is, uh, it's going to be impossible to get rid of, basically. So that's going to do it for the series on fixed do solfege. Um, I'm going to leave you some links to some materials that you might use for further practice. But it's been a joy to produce this series, and I hope that it's been of some benefit to you. So I say one last time, happy sightseeing.